Hello guys, in this OTAD session, we are going to continue with investigations of the retina. This is Dr. Rajaratna. I am going to take you through the various questions that I had already posted on the various platforms. Question number 6, because previously we have already discussed 5 questions. The given image shows. Okay, so what is this investigation? So this investigation is ultrasound B scan. Okay, so this is ultrasound, the B mode. Now, what is B? B stands for brightness. Okay, B stands for brightness. All right. Now, what do we see here? So, we see a couple of things. Uh, now, with B scan, you will be able to see the posterior segment. You will not be able to see much details of the anterior segment. Now, all that I can see is the posterior surface of the lens I can see here. And this shadow that you see here is that of the optic nerve. And something is, you know, arising from the optic nerve taut. Now, what has attachments at the margins of the optic nerve? And this is going into the vitreous. So, this is probably a retinal detachment. Now, let's see the options. Choroidal detachment. Now, choroid usually or most of the times it is not it does not have this attachment at the optic nerve do you see here so the attachment at the optic nerve gives a clue that it is retinal detachment and moreover when you have choroidal detachment beneath that okay beneath the detachment you will have kind of you know a very homogeneous uh, effusion that fluid very commonly you will see that as well so that is there and uh, the choroid also will be very smooth and dome shaped very smooth see this one is a little it's not that smooth if you see this one it's not that smooth so these are points that go against choroidal detachment choroidal melanoma now choroidal melanoma is like a mushroom shaped or a collar button shaped tumor so let's say this were the picture you got so you will have a mass like this. So that was choroidal melanoma. So no. Retinal detachment. Yes, I've already told you that this is retinal detachment. Now asteroid hylosis is a vitreous degeneration where you will have some opacities in the vitreous. Okay, you will have some opacities in the vitreous like a mass. You will have that. Okay, so I'll show you that picture sometime later. So this is how you arrive at a diagnosis looking at ultrasound so ultrasound is basically like a cross section right so here you see the optic nerve and you are also seeing some muscle okay so we really don't know what um, uh, scan is this whether it's a um, transverse scan or longitudinal scan so this is one of the extraocular muscles that you can see can you see the shadowing there yes so once the mind knows the eye sees it See, as long as the mind does not know, you don't see it. So, now you see the optic nerve shadow and something getting attached to the border of the optic nerve. So, that is retinal detachment for you. So, this would have been choroidal melanoma. Okay. All right. So, you, most of you who had answered the previous OTAD sessions question, what is the frequency of ultrasound B scan? It's around 8 to 10 megahertz. Okay, 8 to 10 megahertz. That is the frequency of the ultrasound probe for ocular use. The investigation is question number 7 and the labeled wave originates from dash cells. So this is an ERG as all of you would have known. All right. Now here there's a little dilemma. There's a full field ERG and there's a multifocal ERG. See, multifocal ERG is, it will test multiple points on the retina and you will have multi multiple ERG waveforms there. Here in full field, it's a summation of the entire retina. So you get only one wave, whatever is, whether it's uh, photopic or scotopic or a flicker, but you'll get only a single output all right so this is full field but now full field I have two options so these two I have ruled out because it is not multifocal 
now i pointed out to this wave so that is the second wave see this is the first wave which is a negative wave and this is the second wave so this is the b wave this is a the negative wave is the a wave and this is b wave now b wave originates from see it originates from muller cell and it represents the activity of bipolar cell so that means your answer is b it arises from the muller cells at the level of bipolar cell so where the muller cell and the bipolar cell kind of you know uh, communicate with each other that's the area the b wave is generated so the correct answer is this okay because my question asks for where it originates so it's muller cell this is what most of the textbooks talk about okay um so i hope you understood this question all right now question 8 diagnosis so first of all what is this image showing you this image is showing you a 3d picture or a 3d representation of a multifocal erg so this is a little tricky question for you so i'll explain multifocal irg erg and then come to the diagnosis okay so this is how a normal multifocal erg output looks like okay so it is testing multiple hexagonal areas can you see this picture okay so this is a 3d representation so it tests around 131 areas of the macula okay at the macula individual 131 areas and it gives the individual waveforms of this particular 131 small localized areas okay so this is exclusively of macula so please remember multifocal m for m macula now for you it's a little difficult when you look at this because you're going to look at individual waveforms and see if all the waves are normal but this is easier to understand the 3d representation especially with the color code it's very very easy to understand see this central spike or the central mountain okay that's the area where you have the central uh, field it represents the central 5 degree of the field okay 5 degree of central field which has the highest sensitivity retinal sensitivity why because the cones are maximum in density there so as you see the sensitivity keeps dropping and it it flattens out all right so do you see that okay now when we go back to this picture and see first of all we see that this spike also is a little blunted and we see a lot of darker areas see darker areas correspond to lesser sensitivity okay so where do you have and that is just around the foveola okay so that means it is in the parafoveal region you remember where we talked about depression of the mf erg in the parafoveal area okay in the parafoveal area where do you have this problem okay so that is one clue okay so there is parafoveal depression okay so i have clearly not given you this picture okay so that you know you can just look at the color coding and understand now see tobacco let's look at the other options tobacco amblyopia optic neuritis optic atrophy all these are something to do with the optic nerve okay now in optic nerve lesions the e this multifocal erg can be absolutely normal because it represents only the function of cones and bipolar cells okay the photoreceptors and bipolar cells so optic nerve is composed of ganglion cells so the mf erg can turn out to be absolutely normal all right so where do you get this so obviously that's another point where i can use it to rule out abc and the most important point is in hydroxychloroquine toxicity there's a parafoveal depression of the erg waves on waveforms on multifocal erg all right you may not see it on a full field erg so in this in this one this is a summation of the entire retina but in hydroxychloroquine toxicity we are having problem only at the macular area in the foveal and perifoveal area right so that is why this amplitude is also blunted and the perifoveal area also 
much blunted all right so here the answer is hydroxychloroquine toxicity i know this is a little tough or a very tough question but you get to understand all right so this is a normal normal one okay so you understand or simply they can show you this picture and ask you what is the investigation okay so this is a multifocal erg all right okay so question number nine the eyeball is a dipole which investigation is performed based on this see when i say the eyeball is a dipole that means there is a plus area there's a minus area now based on that we're going to measure the uh, potential of the eye so the cornea is considered positive okay the front end or the anterior end is considered positive and the back end that is the posterior pole or the retina is considered as negative okay so the posterior pole that means macula so we're going to measure the resting membrane potential of the macula all right so which investigation is performed based on this so i've already given out the answer in the way i gave you the explanation electro oculogram eog is where you measure the rmp of the macula assuming that the eyeball is a dipole now what is a dipole that is back to your class 10 or class 11 physics all right so this is electro oculogram so just to tell you what is the uh, what are the um, abbreviations electro retinogram electro oculogram this is visual evoked potential okay visual evoked potential it can also be mentioned as ev visual evoked response in that case ver okay and oct all of you know okay so this is a little dry kind of question but still now that you know it's better when i explain eog sometime later the technique question number 10 name the investigation oh my god investigations turned out to be very tough okay so one pick a day keeps fear of oftal away ma'am up aise pictures dalte ho jisse dar lagta hai hai na so you feel a sense of fear today looking at the pictures but yes we are learning so i am sure you'll be fearless at the end of the session when you've learned a lot of new stuff so what do you see here so you see a fundus image and some numbers superimposed on them so what are these numbers so these numbers are basically the sensitivity of those areas so basically we performed a perimetry of the macula alone okay so we tested the we've done a visual field of the macula and we've done it on areas particular areas on the macula so i know okay now let's say there is a lesion here now let's say there is a lesion here okay maybe a hemorrhage or a cotton wool spot or as in this case there are hard exudates around here so how is how are these lesions affecting this particular spot so how is this particular spot in the retina performing or what is the retinal sensitivity of this particular spot okay so it is a functional evaluation all right so you get a very good idea because when you see normally when you see a perimetry report you get a very gross idea so this you get a very very specific localized idea so you know okay this particular area of my retina this is how it's functioning is retinal sensitivity is this all right so this is called micro perimetry what is the name of the investigation this is called micro perimetry where so I can choose. So the moment um, I get the fundus image, so we kind of overlay this and choose where exactly it has to be performed. All right. So a little bit here and there we can play around. Okay. So this is micro perimetry. It's uh, very useful, especially in case of diabetic retinopathy investigations. Yes. Okay. Now, what is our upcoming OTAD? Our upcoming OTAD is on instruments as per popular demand so we're going to do ophthal instruments next okay so i will be posting the questions on the various platforms as always on whatsapp groups telegram group my facebook page and my facebook group all right so i hope you're loving this otad session and it is high yield and also you're learning new stuff and as always, I hope we are spreading off that love.
it's nothing but love for Oftal. Yes, so you've got to be fearless. Okay. So today actually I've taken you through a lot of images. So I think it should definitely keep fear of Oftal away. So we've done one, two, probably three, four and five. So five pictures. So that has taken care of fear for almost a week. Okay. Guys, all the best. God bless you all.